Laureline Tyler Thompson is a TV host here in Canada. Her book, Relentless Redemption, talks about her brokenness and redemption. She joins us now to tell us the story. Laura, thank you so much for joining Uyiwa, us. Uyiwa, it is such a pleasure to be here with you. I, I feel so great. You know, I was born in Uganda, East Africa. I was going to ask you, uh, knowing that you were born in Uganda, do, do you feel African or Canadian or what? what what happens in your head when you think about Laura? I feel like I'm African. First of all, when I was growing up, we did not have a mirror that was low enough <laughs> for me to see that I was not actually, you know, uh, one of my Ugandan brothers or sisters. I went to school. I got strapped for speaking Lugandan. And the principal called me out in front of everyone, you know, because you were not you were only supposed to speak English. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and he said, even you, Miss Freeman, and uh, I said, yes. And so I had to get my hands strapped. I was one of them. They were my people. Uh -huh. And in fact, by the time that we left in, uh, when I was eight in 1973, uh, Idi Amin had come into the country and just wreaked havoc, right, on all of the all of the people, and he'd killed 500,000 of his own, his own people. Mm -hmm. And so when I left, that was leaving my home forever. Right. And Now, I, I've heard you talk about your time in, in Africa. Yes. You described one particular moment where your father, who's a preacher, because yes. you, your parents are missionaries, uh, makes an altar call, and uh, mm. uh, people come forward, and you're, you're there kneeling down, praying with everyone, and you say, uh, you... you paraphrasing, mm -hmm. uh, you don't know of any other people that's so prayerful and full of joy yes. as... As the African people. You know, I grew up, I was so blessed because these people had so little. And so when they came to worship God at our church where, where my dad was preaching and my mom was a preacher too, so that's why I'm a, a bit of a, a talkative one. But when they would come, they, they didn't have the troubles we have here. They had desperate troubles. They needed food. They needed clothing. They needed good shelter. Uh, there was turmoil in the land. They, their lives were, were precious and yet so easily dispensed by their government. These were desperate people. So when they came to pray, they prayed. I mean, they prayed. Mm -hmm. And I learned to pray uh, in that environment. I learned to seek Jesus and his, his power, his strength, his love in that environment. And I, I, I'm so grateful to this day for that. So Laura, how do you go from being the daughter of missionaries uh, to being surrounded by prayer, much faith, to a place where you, you say yourself for two years, you couldn't smile, a place of darkness and and divorce, you know, yeah. from, from a holy place to that. How did that happen? Well, you know, when, when you were asking me about my dad uh, and, and that prayer time, uh, one pivotal memory in my mind is when I was about six or seven and my dad asked everyone to come pray. And I remember lifting my hands up, tears streaming down my face and saying, God, do something great with my life. I'm going to serve you forever and ever. But by the time I was 25, I, uh, I had married a man when I was 21. And my parents, you know, if you spend any amount of time, and we've, we've had some fun today, and you've gotten to see a little bit, but I'm kind of immature. I'm immature for a, you know, half century old woman. Never mind when no, I No, you're was, not half century, you're lying. I Father, am, forgive her. Forgive me. I am you're half century. I'm 50. Oh. No, so you're I'm, not. Yes, I Whatever am. Whatever cream you're using, baby, I'm taking it with me. It's prayer, ladies. It's the power of prayer. Uh, you just pray that God will preserve the face and, um, and a good makeup artist. And so, so what happened was my parents said, I don't think you're ready to get married. And, you know, Muyiwa, uh, we don't listen to our parents. And we think that we want to conquer the world. And I'd done everything right. I hadn't had sex before I got married. I'd never been drunk. I didn't smoke or toke or do anything that was inappropriate. I was a godly girl. I was trying to do what's right. But I set my sight on this, this fellow. And I let him know that he'd be marrying me and when he should show up and what he should wear. As you do. Yeah. As women do. And uh, I, I didn't listen to anybody. And as I was walking down the aisle with my, my father's arm in mine and 200 guests and the most beautiful dress that I'd ever worn on my wedding day, I looked up at that man and I thought, what am I doing? And who is this? Who is this man that I'm marrying? I barely know him. And honestly, the video that day, which was of course that old VCR video, it showed such a, a sad, sad girl 
doing something that everyone thought was not a good idea. So we got back home from the honeymoon. It hadn't gone well. Uh, all the details are in that book you're holding, Relentless Redemption. And my life began to fall apart. A blackness settled over my heart. Uh, within a couple of years, things were not going better. We went to our pastors. Can you help us? I, You know, we've kind of gotten married. There's no chemistry. There's a real problem here. Will you help us get it better? I wanted to make it better. I knew what the Word of God said. The Word of God said that God hates divorce. I didn't want to get divorced. And I began to interpret that as well, that maybe He would hate divorced people. And God forbid that, that I would not do what's right before God. I tried my whole life to do what was right. I was a missionary girl. I was going to do what was right. So we started getting some secular counseling because the pastors kind of, well, we don't know what to do. And I had married someone that was much like a brother to me, not a married love. And this became such a difficulty. What is a Christian girl to do when she has in the era error of her ways, in her rebellion. She has made choices that she cannot take back. She has done and made covenants before God that she cannot fulfill, that she is not, um, she is not equipped in her humanity. And I began to see that I was a wreck. By the time year five came along, I made some choices and decisions that ended that marriage. And he, he no longer wanted to attempt to reconcile, and I didn't blame him. I had done things that had wounded him. It embarrassed my parents. I lost my church. I I lost my reputation. I lost all hope that I could be that good person. I had lost everything that was valuable to me, everything that, you know, Laura Lynn had this thing, like I belong to a good family. Mm -hmm. I'm a Christian. I'm a good girl. I'll By tell you the time what, Laura, I'm going to in interrupt you there because I know that there are people who I know yeah. personally who are at the place where you're describing. And it would be, be great to hear how do you go from that to, to a place where we're now smiling again. We're, we are. We're, we're laughing again. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're, we believe in God again. We feel accepted. We feel not disqualified again. I'd love to hear that from you. Stay with us. Laura Lynn will tell us how we get to the other side of the pain that we are in right now. It's Turning Point. Stay with us. 